Today's objective is I can describe the difference between IETF and RFCs. So, ever wonder about these numbers up here um, by your objective? Uh, these are the standards that I'm working from. So we have 2.1, a variety of abstractions built upon binary sequences can be used to represent all digital data. So this is something that I'm taking um, into consideration as I create lesson plans for you guys and create these videos and these PowerPoints. It says think, write, share, give me a specific example. So I want to really bring you into the creation process here by showing you a standard and then giving it an example of what I was thinking about as I read such a standard. So here is an example of a think right share I'm looking for you to create. I say one abstraction built upon binary sequences would be the color you see in an image. A specific color is connected to a specific number which can be represented in a binary sequence. This is encoded into the computer and thus any time a certain color needs to be shown on a monitor, um, this number is connected to it. So, if you could just read this standard one more time, a variety of abstractions built upon binary sequences can be used to represent all digital data. So what I'm asking you to do is think of another example. I used one about an image. Think of another example to write your own think right share on 2.1. 2.2 multiple levels of abstraction are used to write programs or create other computational artifacts. So think right here, give me an example from the standard. I'm thinking that HTTP is an abstraction for the way browsers send and receive data. That makes up a web page. So there's one example of an abstraction um, people use. 3.1, people use computer programs to process information to gain insight and knowledge. So I think Rayshare gave me another example of, a sta of, of the standard in use. So we've covered um, a, a lot of this during class over the past few days. So here's my example. One such program that helps people process information is Microsoft Excel, right? That's just a, a spreadsheet. People can put things in boxes and therefore it is a computer program that's helping people understand information. So they have insight and knowledge from that information. Definitely not um, a hard task I'm asking of you here. So reread the standard. Think of another example outside of the one I gave you and just explain it. Finding the answer to this led me to another question actually. Are websites programs? So I settled on the answer that web pages can run programs but are themselves not. So this is the type of curiosity uh, that I want out of you guys and then search for the answers in class. Doing that is definitely welcomed and I'm interested in you posting your results as often as possible um, through Canvas so others can see them and I can definitely see them even give you feedback on um, what you're thinking there. So part of that process I landed on this website Somebody said, more generally speaking, here are all the different parts of a URL as per window.location, so at least according to how JavaScript calls it. All right, so I'm looking for the answer. Are web pages programs? And I come across this, this stuff, and this is just interesting and helpful. So I definitely saved this table um, to use later. And then at the bottom here, formal definition is in RFC 6454, section 4. So that leads me um, to uh, the other part of the lesson today where we talk about RFCs. Um, that answer is fine, but later I find a better one. Okay, so like I said, that table you just saw is something I want to save and refer back to later. Um, now here's some better information that looks even um, more helpful, but still I can understand myself now. I'm pretending to be a student here. I can understand myself enough to know that this information, um, I, I don't totally know what all of it is saying, but I definitely know HTTP. I know protocol. I know WW. I'm understanding what servers are, subdomains. Okay, so now as I move down the list, there's more um, obscure knowledge, again, pretending to be a student, not knowing what this is. Um, that's okay. I like um, you guys to save things for later, to revisit later, and then connect to um, the lesson. Today's lesson being IETF and RFCs. So, 
Okay, and I'm still not done with this thing that I had um, started searching uh, searching for. Uh, just be cognizant of the time when you're doing this. So I found this very interesting fancy word. Uh, Web-based project management software. Okay, so I'm searching is our web pages software, and I find web-based project management software is the collection of programs, processes, and information that is used to manage various phases of a project and that is accessible to the Internet. Project management entails processes such as scheduling, calculating a critical path, building timelines, creating task lists, managing resources, controlling documents, and providing audit trails. Each of these processes can be controlled and sometimes automated through project management software solutions. Okay, so I want to keep going. I want to YouTube search project management software so I could see this in action, but I know I have to cut myself off because I got to get through the lesson. You guys can definitely do um, all the research you want at home and during the weekends as well. Okay, so let's really begin the actual lesson of today. I want you to think back to using binary um, messages to communicate points on a graph. So um, that, that symbol right there should look familiar to you. When you created a way to plot a picture with a partner, what you did is you invented a text-based code. Whether using formatting languages like HTML or programming languages like Java, C, or Python, all of these languages have one thing in common. They use ASCII text to encode other text or information. So you're using this ASCII um, encoding Okay, this is layers of abstraction we've talked about before. If you've forgotten exactly how ASCII works and the details of that, no problem. Just understand that we're building on top of something that was already built. When you did that, you invented a coding language, basically. Okay, at this point in the course, a code and a protocol are very similar, even though it's probably something no one else will use. Uh, the process students just went through gives a taste of inventing any kind of formal language or protocol that ultimately needs to be interpreted and processed by a computer. So I ask you, now whose responsibility is it to communicate how a protocol works to the rest of the world? And then why is it their responsibility? You guys invented a coding language. Now whose job is it to give the details of that language to the rest of the world? What if you came up with something else? What if you came up with a protocol for anything else involving a computer? The mission of the IETF is to make the Internet work better by producing high-quality, relevant technical documents that influence the way people design, use, and manage the Internet. So not just a uh, coding language. I'm not saying if you're a person who created one, now you contact the IETF and somehow they're the ones um, you work with to get that out in the world. All I'm saying is when there's new things for people to use to design, use, and manage the Internet, IETF um, is there to help communicate that. They use RFCs, okay? So this stands for a request for comments. It's a type of publication from this IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force, and the Internet Society, so ISOC. The principal technical development and standard setting bodies for the Internet. An RFC is authored by engineers and computer scientists in the form of a memorandum or memo uh, describing methods, behaviors, research, or innovations applicable to the working of the Internet and Internet connected systems. It is submitted either for peer review or simply to convey new concepts, information, or occasionally engineering humor. The IETF adopts some of the proposals published as RFCs as Internet standards. So if you were to go to the IETF website right now, um, you would probably spend the rest of the day doing exactly what I said I wanted you to do, and that is searching out your curiosities. If I'm saying that RFCs give you details about innovation, then yeah, that would be a great place to just go and uh, look, look around. Though our reading for the day is not that website, I definitely encourage you to check it out. Um, the internet is for everyone. This calls out um, a series of threats to the prospect that the internet should be an open and easy and cheap resource for everyone on the planet. And DOL time. So one of the most powerful uses of the internet is sending text to people. So we agreed to ASCII. What about the new stuff? So a really simple intro today on what IETF and RFC is. I want you to briefly describe uh, both of them using two details for each.